Our next speaker is John Feigenbaum. He's been a professional numismatist since 1979. Formerly president of David Lawrence Rare Coins, John has taken on publishing and executive responsibilities for CDN Publishing, the company that produces the coin dealer newsletter, The Gray Sheet, and other important coin and paper money reference guides. John has written for numerous trade publications and published the Complete Guide to Washington Quarters in 1991. In 2014, he received the PNG Abe Kossoff Founders Award for his steadfast dedication to the entire numismatic community. John? Uh, first, I want to thank everybody in the ANA for inviting me to speak on this topic today, bringing together this impressive group of people and industry leaders. I think it's a great step in the right direction that we're even having this conversation today. I think it's one of the first times I recall uh, having a symposium like this. Um, one of the most often heard concerns in the numismatic community that I hear relates specifically to the aging community of both our dealers and collectors. <clears throat> Everyone is wondering where the next generations of, of customers are going to come from, just like we're all talking about, and if they don't appear, is the market going to fall apart? You know, I've personally long puzzled on this topic, and I've often found that the prescribed remedies by the industry leaders I've heard really tend to miss the mark that I see. A recent Mint Symposium that I attended earlier this year addressed the topic of how they were going to engage and bring new collectors into the market uh, with a big group of bland comic book characters. And I sat in the audience and I wondered, really? I mean, is, is that how we're going to really, you know, jumpstart the rare coin market by uh, bringing in five-year-olds? When is that going to pay off? And the fact is, it, it won't. You know, we can't market to five-year-olds. So uh, I think what we need to do in this industry is focus on 30 to 50-year-olds People who are transitioning into a new lifestyle have more time on their hands and starting to think about new collecting interests. So I spent the first 40 years of my career since the age of 10 <clears throat> on the dealer side of the, coin, of the booth at coin shows and growing a mail order rare coin business. So now, in my new role as publisher of the gray sheet here at CDN, I kind of have a unique and clear pulse of this market. For starters, most people think that we are in the magazine business. It's not true. We acquired CDN as a new newsletter publisher, but we quickly realized that the only way we were going to survive the impending digital economy was to transition into pricing into, and in, transition our pricing into data tools. While 75% of our subscribers still prefer a printed magazine, that number is slowly transitioning to online. More and more, readers demand that we offer them pricing in print, online, on their phones, in a specific application that they might be building, um, create to manage their inventories, their collections, so on. So it may surprise people here to know that I spend more of my personal time working on these digital initiatives than on the pricing of coins in any given week. Ironically, there's no real way to predict what, what we'll need in one, three, five, or ten years. We have no way of knowing. So what we develop at CDN on all fronts to make sure we're covered you know, depending on which way the seas turn. So back to the original question on the future of numismatics. For starters, <clears throat> I'd like you to consider that coin and paper money collecting is a hobby that is enjoyed by people who enjoy touching things. We le learning about history, understanding rarity as it relates to demand. These traits really don't overlap strongly with people who enjoy technology, you know, and you know, they're not inter interested in the latest iPhone releases or email or whatever, whatever technology is available to them. We find that our readers really enjoy the magazine and, tact, you know, touching things. You know, I, I even wrote down a note here that I, that I would venture to bet that we have more AOL users in the rare coin business than, you know, by a factor of three or four than in any other industry. So, our, you know, it's no, it's, you know, it's no surprise that our collectors and dealers tend to be older and fairly set in their ways, and they're just not interested in adapting, something I hear all the time. And I don't blame them. But it also presents a challenge when you're trying, like we are, to build software tools for people who really are stuck in this kind of limbo land of whether they want to use printed or online tools. So we, publi we publish the gray sheet on a monthly basis. And thanks, thanks to the necessary publishing times, we're now at about a 21-day lag between the time we drop our files on, you know, from the computer into the computer and make them into printed files. <clears throat> and so when gold prices move quickly, we're hopelessly out of date with this material. And, we, and, and when gold's moving like it is today, we get a lot of calls. So <clears throat> what are we going to do? Well, we tell people when they call, use the app. The app's updated every four hours, and you can get gold pricing immediately. But they're not happy with that. People, people in the, you know, collecting in the rare coin business are still not, they don't believe it until they see it in print. So we are constantly fighting with this evolution of technology 
and, we, and to that end, we think that the biggest void are tools to bring people across this bridge from the old, you know, the old world of print into technology. And, and I've just got a warning that I have only a minute left. But really, as a former dealer and someone who speaks regularly with small dealers to succeed in this hobby, it's clear to me that the biggest challenges we face is to help small dealers manage their inventory so that they can succeed in this very difficult time. Nowadays, you have to travel to shows, you have to list your items on eBay, maybe Amazon, you have to send submissions to grading services, you have to then do everything that a normal dealer does, like you know, pay taxes and city licenses and employees and things like that, and it really is overwhelming to most, most dealers today. And that's where I find that they struggle. And so what CDN wants to do is bring tools to small dealers through the programs that we're already offering, so we're gonna expand you know, our area of what we do pricing to bring small dealer tools because we think this is really the biggest barrier. And the other area that I was going to discuss and I'm out of time on is to simply say that, you know, it's the small dealer, as Chris Karstadt really said, it, the virus, is that the small dealer is the one who touches the collector or the, the, the person who's just casually interested in coin collecting and then becomes a very serious collector. So we need that food chain to exist and I think that bringing software tools is going to be a big part of it. Thank you.